And good afternoon YouTube. So I'm getting ready to use the power shelf here to test this old Harbor Freight jump start system. So this is a model 40615. I think I purchased this around 2002. So it's about 15 years old. It has a 24 amp hour 12 volt lead acid battery. So what I thought I would do, I just topped off the charge. It's been outside on the solar charger all day. And I'm going to try to do a discharge test and see what kind of amp hour rating it has. I don't know if there's any capacity in this thing or not. So let's see, why don't we uh, stop. I'll do a discharge. What I'll do is go up to 1.2 which if it's 24 amp hours, that should be a 20 hour discharge rate. So let's see what happens here. And we'll do regenerative discharge. So I'm basically going to pump all the energy back into the 4S lithium pack. So yeah, it's, it's holding. We'll see how the voltage does, see what it uh, does on the, on the discharge, see what kind of capacity is left in this, because this battery is about 15 years old. Well, looks like this battery in here is not any good. I've tried two cycles here, and it's actually even gone downhill. The first one it did 99 milliamp hours, and this one did 69. It runs down, I think, to 10.4 volts and shuts off. Okay, YouTube got the jump start pack opened up and yeah it does have a 12 volt 24 amp hour battery so I guess they use these in UPS's a lot. I can get a replacement I guess they're about $49 plus shipping. I'll have to look around see if I can find better price but I guess that's kind of the going rate. I, mean, I usually pay about two dollars an amp hour for the smaller batteries so that's that is in the range in fact the new the replacement batteries 26 amp hours reasonably good size cable look like about uh, let's see here's my new battery cables that I'm making I would say that's about two gauge maybe yeah and then inside oh here we go inspected what does that say yeah so look at that yeah, 2001. I think I bought this in 2002. So that has definitely got its money's worth. And I guess this is your little 120 volt charger. So you can plug a, a power cable in the side and charge it. And then there's, uh, I guess, where does that feed up here? Yeah, so that feeds up to this little circuit board, which I imagine is probably the got the charging circuits on there. Yeah, here's your meter right here, and then this, oh, here's your switch. So this is the contactor. So that's that's a nice, nice heavy contactor, heavy brass, pretty impressive. Then you've got your light. Must have the little charging circuit on here. You can plug a 12-volt uh, DC jack in there. If we turn that around. Yeah, so that's your switch, light charging and then it's got a little charging LED on there off and on there's your contactor so yeah that's for being 16 years old that thing's in really good shape it's been outside most of the time oh okay that's all they do this is just a little 12 volt uh, wall power supply and then the cable runs up here and then they just solder it to the little circuit board there. So there's probably a little, uh, yeah, it looks like there's a, you got your LED and resistor there. There's a diode, probably reverse polarity. And I imagine there's probably a, looks like a little charging three pin regulator there, probably. But I think I will get myself a new battery for this. I mean, I could buy a new one, but you know, you wonder what kind of quality battery you're going to get out of new one. And the new ones have all sorts of, uh, you know, air compressors and radios and all this other stuff. I mean, this one's just bare bones. So yeah, I think I will uh, 
upgrade this one, put a uh, new battery in there, and use this in my garden shed, and hook up the solar charge controller. So I'll have 30 watts of panels on the roof. I can hook this up to the charge controller. I need to uh, mount a PC fan or two in there and use that to uh, cool the shed in the summer. And then also put a uh, light inside the shed that I can turn on and off. And then also put maybe a motion sensor light on the back door of the shed to light up the backyard when I go outside there. So I think that might be the plan. And if I do that, I don't have to run any wires over to the shed. It can be a standalone 12 volt solar battery charging station. And I can also plug my 12 volt uh, backpack sprayer in there too. It's also got a 12 volt lead acid battery that needs to be replaced. If I can leave it on charge all the time, it'll probably last a lot longer because the, the garden sprayer, I, I'll show you a separate video on that. I would use it once or twice a year and then it would just sit and I'd forget about it. And then I'd go out and find out the battery was dead so you'd have to charge it for a couple of days. You'd use it and then you'd put it back in the corner and forget about it for another six months or a year and the battery was dead again so at least this one I left it on charge almost all that time so anyway I just thought I'd show you what's inside of one of these that's pretty impressive I mean that thing is is pretty well built I mean for Harbor Freight I think that's worth putting a new battery in and this is my shed solar power system right there it's got everything that I need in there and yeah maybe I'll buy myself a 12 volt LED flashlight bulb for that thing yeah so anyway that's what's inside of a 2001 model Harbor Freight jump start pack model 40615 when I get the battery we'll put that back together and uh, maybe give it a capacity test when it's new and see how it works but yeah that'll go on the uh, solar shed project when I get that uh, get those panels mounted and maybe uh, I'll also take a look at the old Harbor Freight greenhouse solar charge controller and fan controller that I have I want to open that up and see what's inside of it so yeah we'll take a look at that and uh, if you have any questions about that, post up in the comments section below. And as always, thanks for watching.